Hey everybody, today we're going to look at an introductory tutorial to the full process of modeling a game asset in Blender. So that's going to be from start to finish in version 2.90.1. I'm going to assume that you have some basic understanding of how to navigate Blender and how to do some simple 3D modeling exercises. Um, so I won't be walking you through necessarily step by step and explaining all the interface and all that. Um, I want to move a little bit more quickly and we're going to go through the whole process and I'm going to chop it up into a series of digestible videos, probably around 20 minutes each. We're going to start off with the mesh creation after I do all the add-on setup so that everybody knows what I'm doing. This is a fresh install of version 2.90.1. Um, in the future, I will use my version of Blender that has some add-ons and things like this that I'll call out at the beginning of the video. But for this one, I'm just going to make it beginner friendly. And like I said, we're going to go through the mesh generation. We'll talk about how to do a UV layout and what that means and how to conceptualize it. We will do some basic material creation. And then for that material, we're going to create textures. And we're going to be generating some of those textures using baking from a high resolution mesh to a low resolution mesh inside of Blender. And then we're going to be using Adobe Illustrator to create the image maps that we will be working with. And we'll do some additional baking and things like that inside of Blender. And then last but not least, I will be showing you how to set up a turntable animation as well as a wireframe animation to show off your work. If you want to use this as a portfolio piece, I would recommend definitely having a turntable and a wireframe to show off your work. So without further ado, let's just get up and running with this whole process. So I'm gonna delete everything in my scene. I'm gonna go to my preferences and I'm going to change the interface. We'll make it a little bit larger just so it's easier for people to follow along. I'm also gonna change some of my theme settings in the 3D viewport. Uh, I'm gonna change my vertex size and face dot size to six pixels. That way we can see and manipulate those just a little bit easily, uh, more easily. And then I need to turn on a couple of add-ons. I always like to turn on loop tools. Uh, this comes default with Blender. We're also going to do node arrange and node wrangler. I may or may not use these again, default with Blender. And then we need to turn on import images as planes. Again, that's something that comes default. And then this last one does not come default, but it's something, it's something that I need that you don't need. It's just so that you can see whatever keys I'm pressing on screen. And so you don't have to worry about installing that. That's just for your sake. And then lastly, I'm going to go to my key map and turn on select all toggles and change my spacebar action to search instead of play. And we're going to save those. And there we go. So I actually have the project folder set up for what we're creating. So today we're going to be creating this little tonic. It's a little bottle full of liquid. Um, we're going to create the design for it and everything. It's going to be slightly different than what this actual product is because I took this image directly off the internet. I actually have a bottle of this in the bathroom right now that I can look at. Um, but this doesn't belong to me in terms of intellectual property, so I'm not going to distribute this image. You could probably search it on Google if you're clever enough. Uh, but we'll, I'll be using this as my reference image. Feel free to follow along or find your own, photograph your own subject and go with that. So that's going to be in my reference folder. I have a texture folder that we're going to use to collect textures that we're going to download from HDRI Haven along with CC0 textures and some other places that provide royalty free to use textures. And then I have two folders, one for our animation and one for our wireframe animation that we're going to end up uh, generating later on. So I'm going to snap into a front view and go back into my project folder. Uh, I always recommend put everything in its own folder and save everything there. That way you're nice and organized. I'm going to take my reference image and I'm just going to drag it into Blender and drop it in. Sometimes this gives me an error when I try to do this. I'm not sure why. So if it gives you an error the first time, it'll say traceback error or something like that. Just try to drop it in again. Usually it works on the second try. Not sure why that is, but it is just something you have to deal with every now and then. I'm going to scale this up and move it right about here, I want to say. And let me turn on my screencast keys so you can see what I'm doing. It actually is on. It's just for some reason not uh, showing itself. There it is. And I'm just going to move this over to the right side. I'll have to remember um, to keep turning this on as I switch in and out of different windows. And then I'm also going to set this down to like a medium gray, I guess like 0.67 or something like that. That's fine. And then I can close that back up. And there you go. We have, uh, it'll show you what I'm pressing. Okay. So now that we've got a reference in here, let's just rename this to reference in our outliner so we know what we're looking at. Stay organized. And let's just move this. Like that. 
All right, so let's go into our 3D view and I'm just gonna push this back into space, G, Y, and I'm gonna hold control to snap it to the grid because I'm a little uh, specific like that. Okay, so let's also change this so that you have a little bit longer to see what's on screen. Give it five seconds. Now I need to generate a mesh with which to create the uh, 3D model. Uh, you'll also note here that I have the timeline. on it. I can collapse that for now. We'll use it later for animation, but we don't need it right now. So I need to create a mesh. I'm going to hit Shift A to do that. You can also do the Add menu up here, whatever you're more comfortable with. We're going to add in a circle. I happen to know it spawns in with 32 vertices, which is uh, two times more than what I want because I want 16. I find that working with powers of eight for my geometry tends to work good, a four or eight, generally speaking. Um, so 16 here is going to be my magic number. And again, this is going to be a game resolution mesh. This is not going to be a um, film quality asset, but I can talk about how to get that sort of fidelity out of this if you need it. Now, one thing that we should notice about a reference is it is a photo that is taken with some perspective. So this isn't going to be modeled perfectly to the dimensions of what we're seeing in the background. If you need to be more specific about your dimensions, then definitely work with your clients and get some good detail about the product that you're trying to recreate. If you have some measurements that you can use in the real world, of course, that's always good. And then there are, of course, measurement tools here in Blender. And we can also be very specific about the transformations we're making by dialing in values in order to make them. So now I'm going to hit tab and go into edit mode. We're just going to extrude this up to about here. And then I'm going to scale this out just so it lines up with the edge of the bottle. And then I'm going to extrude tapping E and then Z to uh, constrain it on the Z axis. Then we're going to do that again right about here. And here I'm going to hit Alt Z to turn on my X-ray mode. You can also use this button up here. And I'm just going to scale this in roughly like so. And then E Z because it's easy, right? and then scale that up or move that up there. And then again, I'm gonna move this up and I'm going to try to make this, this portion here relatively square. That looks good. So now you can see we've created the rough shape of the bottle. If I tumble around in 3D view, there it is. Not too shabby. Uh, B, although we are going to need, um, we're going to need additional geometry in order to create the shape of what we're creating here. You can see here that the bottle is more rounded here and this is too straight, so. Now we're gonna do what's called adding an edge loop. And so we have this button here, a loop cut, or I'm going to press control C, which is my preferred keyboard shortcut. And depending on where I place my cursor, it's going to change where that loop cut is. So if I place it here, it's gonna cut straight through the center. If I place it here, it's gonna cut through this one. So make sure it's located here. We're gonna click once, and that will allow us to drag this up and down. If we wanna put it in place, we can just right click and leave it where it is. I'm just gonna scale this up a little bit. And then I'm going to add another loop cut here. Click and then right click. Scale that up a little bit. And then another one up here. Just move it up a little bit and scale that in a little. And there we go. We have the rough outline of our bottle. I could also take this one and this one. I can drag select with my box select option here. Then hit S shift Z. And the reason I need to do that is if I scale this normally, it's going to scale up and down. I don't want it to do that. So S shift Z and just kind of get close to the shape there. Cause I want these lines here to be parallel to one another. Um, so I'm doing both at the same time. And then at the bottom, we're going to put in a loop cut here and I'm just going to scale that like so just to get a little additional rounding going on. And I'm debating if I want to put in this extra loop at the bottom. I think I will. And uh, that should be okay. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in two additional loops. One here, roughly in this spot. And then another one here, roughly in this spot. And we may end up dissolving these later, but that's going to be for the generation of our label when we get around to it. The next thing we need to do is we need to solve this issue here with this kind of donut looking thing. This, this little lip on the lid or the... The top of the bottle, it's not really the lid. And I'm going to click here and add in a edge. And then I'm going to scale this out beyond the bounds of that. And I'm going to hit Control B to bevel it and scroll up once on the mouse wheel in order to kind of create that rounded shape there. And that's looking pretty good. The other thing is uh, with bevels, you can, of course, scroll on the mouse wheel to get additional geometry. Also with a loop cut, you can do the same thing. Scroll with the mouse wheel to get more cuts. But I just want the one here and then kind of pinch that in a little bit with scaling. And that looks okay. And so there we go. We have the beginning of our bottle. 
it looks pretty good, but we need to close up the bottom now. So let's switch back over. And I'm going to select this entire uh, edge loop by holding down Alt and clicking on the middle of this edge here. Now you'll note that I have to be careful where I put my cursor. If I put it over on an edge like this, it's gonna go vertical. If I do it on a horizontal one, it'll go all the way around. And so you need to make sure that there are no um, disruptions in the flow of your geometry. Because these go all the way around the mesh, there aren't, and it works fine. However, if you do have disruptions, then um, it's not going to work the way you anticipate. So make sure you have clean geometry. So here, now that we have the bottom selected, I'm going to press the F key and create what's known as an N-GON. That's what this is. And we need to solve this N-GON and turn it into quads. Um, N-GONs are not necessarily the end-all and be-all with geometry issues. The same thing with triangles. A lot of 3D modelers get scared of both of those things and think I can never have them. That's not true. Now, generally speaking, we want to model everything with quad polygons. So that's four vertex polygons or four edge polygons. Uh, the, the way that we want, the reason we want that is because they deform cleanly. So it's nice to have a clean mesh that deforms well when you smooth it or subdivide it or rig it and animate it. Um, in our case, we're not going to be doing any rigging and animation. So it's not the end of the world if it's not the best topology. But here I'll show you how to set up a good top, uh, topological flow. So here I'm going to select this vertex and this vertex that intersect with the um, x-axis here. You can see this red line running through here, and that's just click and shift click to select more than one thing at once. I'm going to hit the J key to connect those. We're going to do it with the top and bottom vertex here that are intersecting with our y-axis. And then here, if I select these, I can also um, join those together. And then these two here and here. And there we go. Now all the bottom faces are quads. So you can see one, two, and here, two, three, and four. And they're all four sided polygons. It's all even. So now I'm going to select the bottom nine vertices that we just created. Right click and say smooth vertices. Hold down shift R so that it kind of distributes itself evenly. The spaces are now a little more soft instead of being straight lines. And then what I'm going to do is hit control number pad plus. You can also go to the select option and say select more, more right here. And then of course less is control number pad minus, and that will just increase our selection. And now I'm going to hit the I key to inset this just a little bit. And you can see if I go too far, it intersects on itself. That's not what I want. So that's why I'm just going to do a little bit. And then I'm going to use the scale option and you can see it kind of gets rid of that overlapping issue that we were having just a second ago. Now, obviously, if I go too far, it's still bad, but you know, it, it gets rid of uh, more of that issue that we would have had. So I'm going to click there and then I'm going to hit click control number pad minus and just grab that selection. And I'm just going to hit GZ and move it up and then right click and say smooth vertices. And there we go. We've got the bottom of our bottle. It's nice and smooth. It looks pretty good. And so there we go. We've created our bottle. Uh, now we can smooth shade it. So with the object mode here, I hit tab. You'll see there in the thing. I hit tab to switch out into object mode. I'm going to right click and say shade smooth, and I'm going to name this tonic. So that way we have our bottle. And then what I can do is find my object, uh, object data properties here and look for normals and then turn on auto smooth and set this to 60. It's going to or maybe even 65, oh, 80, there we go. Uh, this one edge loop in the middle might be a little harsh, so I'm going to use my Alt trick to select that and just scale it in a little bit to soften it. So now if I set this to 60, it should still be relatively smooth, and it is. I'm going to select this edge loop here and Alt Shift select this one and say Control E, or use the edge menu here, Control E and say Mark Sharp. And now when I tab out, you can see that it has added a different shading for this uh, rounded donut looking thing for, than for the rest of the bottle, which is what I want. And then I'm going to go to the modifier tab and I'm going to use weighted normal and say keep sharp. And that will just give me some better normal shading that will also influence things that we model later. And there we go. We have the basis for our tonic bottle created. That's going to be the first part of this video. In the next part, we're going to create the cap. We're going to look at UV layouts and baking things. So make sure you join me in that section.